Right, folks, so this is a new project I'm starting. Um, uh, well, I've mentioned it before, but I wanted to build a cabaret Donkey Kong cab. And it's, uh, it's got a funny shape, it's actually quite small. Um, there's another platform coming here, so it'll be about that high altogether. It comes to about, let's see, here. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's like, what, four foot? high or something like that it's quite small but um it's tidy and nice so what I've uh, got of the internet uh, <laughs> excuse me what I've got of the internet is uh, uh, schematics well plans and dimensions so I'm actually just uh, right now just cutting and putting arranging everything to size so this is where the the control panel will come uh, this will be the rest for the screen rest for the monitor and then these are just um, little uh, sections of wood to, uh, to glue everything together. Um, so it, it, it kind of fits slots together. Uh, so this will be the base. And this is all the dimensions of uh, all the stuff I've measured here. As you can see, it's quite uh, funny angles and bits. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that these were right on each side so uh, that they match. So they do, and what I'm doing right now is cutting these little bars um, this is an old piece of uh, I don't know what this was back of a bed or something like that but I'm just, cut, just cutting these pieces um, that will essentially just fit here uh, might as well reuse as much as I can so I will glue and screw them in place and then uh, so I'll do that before even I before even I, I can even put the uh, the sides up and the back so uh, the plan right now is to have this finished today hopefully uh, have everything glued in place today and the next time I can start making the sides and uh, putting the box together uh, and then the fun the real fun will start because then we'll have to paint it uh, we'll have to find a, a decent monitor I think I have one I can use already and then uh, we'll have to find uh, obviously a a crazy Kong board I have but do all the, uh, the harness and, uh, and wiring inside and and uh, paint it do all the decals cutting the groups for the uh, team molding so there's still you know quite a, a bit to do I'll show you the monitor I have this is actually another thing I've done recently I've finished uh, or I've made another section of this uh, this attic bit and hello you know <laughs> and uh, so we have a lot more space now. I've, uh, as you can see, we we had the stairs, but uh, it's great because it gives me a lot of room to put uh, all my old PCs and monitors and spares. Uh, I have I have a ton of spares. Uh, yeah, PlayStation stuff and uh, a lot of about five or six mega drives. Anyway, I have these Philips. A monitor not these ones um, these are L61 chassis and this is the one I used for the video I was showing you a while back and the problem with this one actually um, I can't really use it because there's no uh, horizontal align alignment so the picture is actually um, off the screen about that much so I can't really use these screens for arcade monitors after all that. However, what I can use is these old uh, Philips VG80. I've done a, a, a video on these. I have about three of these and uh, they're quite easy to get still, surprisingly. Um, it's funny because if you look at online, you'll find the Amiga version, which is essentially the same monitor, just with the Amiga, the Commodore, um, uh, title on it and uh, they go for much much higher the only difference in them is the Commodore <laughs> logo and the fact that they're beige but these were actually the same monitor they were all made by Philips or, or licensed by Commodore from Philips Philips used to make uh, get them made in uh, is, it, is it Taiwan uh, Taiwan yeah there you go so uh, so there you are. I might use one, might use one of this. Um, I'll probably use this this one because on this one the uh, the button is dead, and uh, and there's a button on the side, so it's not really really nice. But they all work. This was my original one I had when I was a kid. Uh, the one I have, I have another one in my room. 
um, to test. So I'll probably use this one. It's for 14, 14 inch monitor uh, with a, a 13 inch overall display. So the, the, the width is 14 inch side to side, but the display is 13. That's usually how uh, things are measured. Uh, people in America like to say uh, 13 and 19. Uh, give odd numbers, uh, whereas in fact in Europe it, these are the same monitor, but we call them 14 and 20 inch, um, but they're the same size. Anyway, so that's the plan. So uh, I'll keep going and get everything cut and uh, and see where how far I go today. And there you go. So I have these glued and screwed in place. It should be solid enough. Um, I have another one here. Uh, I'll actually clean this a bit, the uh, glue. Um, there you go. So now I'm going to leave this to dry and then I'll start working on the base. Or actually, how do I think of it? I could, I could actually already make the front and the top and bottom uh, back because here we'll, um, we'll basically have this should be uh, I need to think about this this should be the back here somewhere so that we can slide the monitor out of it and uh, this way and then because the monitor will be on a plate that rests on this so I need to check the schematics but even if it's not like that I would probably make it make it that way so that this slides out uh, for the monitor. So there's a space here left, the monitor slides out. Um, yes, yeah, probably what I'll do. So I'll do, I'll do the back here, it should be just uh, this, this wide, the bottom and then the, the front and it should actually keep it together in a box, uh, tight and nice and solid. Um, so I have something to show you at the end of today. So that went quite fast once I had all the dimensions sorted and and uh, written down. Uh, sourcing the the dimension was actually uh, somewhat tricky. I'll show you what I've come to me here, but I'll show you what I did. So this is SketchUp, and uh, I got a SketchUp um, a model of uh, of the cab. So this is what the cab will look like. But instead of having the uh, the, using the well, I use the dimensions here for just general width, just to cut the overall shape. But when it comes to stuff like that, um, there was a there's an AutoCAD model that is floating around that I, I got. It's easy to get. Uh, I think you go to classicarcadegames.com or something like that. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have AutoCAD, so I used um, to get the dimensions. So I, I used uh, the uh, JPEG of the uh, AutoCAD. Um, there's an online viewer that allows you to actually view the uh, the, auto the, um, the dimensions, the AutoCAD file, but there's no uh, there's no dimension. So I use that, and then I I, uh, I use that as a a texture on the uh, SketchUp model, just to um, to, uh, to you know um, use that as a texture to size. Sorry, <coughs> I'm actually out of breath here. And then from here, I can actually just draw lines and, and then get the dimensions. The, the dimension tool here uh, that tells you, okay, this is here, you know, this is uh, five one quarter inches, and etc. etc. So I did a lot of that, and then uh, and then I was able to get all the uh, approximate, approximated uh, dimensions. Uh, here, I I changed the model slightly uh, in the sense that this bar here, this blocking bar where normally the box will rest, I've actually lifted that up slightly and I'll make the, uh, the box slightly bigger because I don't have wood thick enough. But I could double it, I suppose. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Anyway, uh, so that's my plan uh, for now. Right, this is uh, uh, more of the cab. So uh, I've, I've put the uh, the box here for the control panel. Uh, at some point, I will actually need to make a box here for the display. Because um, normally there's a sticker here that says Donkey Kong, but I actually want to have it light, lit up. So I'm gonna have to open uh, something here and um, 
and uh, but I can do that after that's okay uh, I got the back and bottom uh, glued um, I'll clean all this before I, I need to paint it anyway but right now uh, while this is all drying uh, I'm just playing around with the uh, monitor so this uh, I don't know if you remember I admit this video of making a a small frame for this uh, monitor chassis. The problem with these, these are Philips L61 uh, L61 uh, chassis, but you can uh, change the uh, the horizontal positioning. So some of the graphics is uh, offside by a bit. But luckily, I've got these um, VG80 uh, Philips monitor. Now these are still quite cheap on the uh, on the internet, and they, they work quite well. So I'm going to use one of these. Um, and the way it'll work is. When you open the back here, uh, you can slide the whole chassis and assembly on this plate here, like so. Uh, I might actually need to cut a small notch here for a bit of extra space, but um, that's roughly the idea. So if I need to uh, disconnect everything and I can slide out the uh, entire sh um, um, monitor like that. So I'm going to have to... Um, find a way to align this properly on here so that I can sit the chassis on the other side literally just put the chassis down and bolt it to these uh, so I'm gonna have to uh, find a way to do all this but it's okay so that's uh, that's my job for today um, yeah I'll just I need to find the uh, the center uh, draw a few lines and then and then uh, align this so it's actually nice and square and the monitor is horizontal, like that, because this is Donkey Kong with it. So uh, there you go, some progress here right now. All right, there you go. I uh, I got the monitor in a sort of a well chassis frame type of thing. Um, so that's the old one. It's uh, it's sticking out slightly, and there's not much I can do about that because that's just the angle it's at. So I'm gonna have to cut it. Um, here, uh, it's okay. This is just to provide some form of well, not protection, but just uh, sturdiness to the, the whole thing. And then, um, because I'm catching it from from these bolts here, so I just want to make sure that it's it's sort of clamped between uh, that piece of wood. Um, <clears throat> so that's all right. I'll just cut this here, so I can actually have a back door uh, at the back of this. Um, and then I had to cut this notch uh, so that the monitor slides in and out um, easily so there's a couple of problems here that um, I was I was hoping that I could put the monitor underneath but that doesn't really work it'll provide too much it won't be strong enough really uh, and I won't get a good grip on the uh, this frame so uh, I have to put it sitting on top it's probably safer like that the only problem is that um, my uh, the dimensions were probably off by uh, Quite a bit. So essentially, I thought there would be enough of a of a gap between the uh, the two bars that I have running here. So this is sitting on one of the bars. Um, on, there you go. It's here. Um, but it's it's just it's not enough, and it's actually sticking out by too much. Let me show you. So if I have um, the glass coming over here, um, you see there. It's it's just uh, there's all this gap here. Um, my fault. I should have. See, I, 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 I made this thinking that essentially uh, this would actually be under this plate, so there'll be all this, uh, all this gap here to play with. And I actually spaced them a bit wider yet, so uh, no, no, not to worry. I mean, I'm gonna have to uh, just put these here, essentially, uh, so the glass will be slightly higher. And it actually works out okay because the control panel, I'm gonna make that out of uh, thicker wood, here, um, something like that. There you go, and then um, this wood, and then there'll be a slight sheet of metal just above that, uh, so the, the control panel sits on that. So uh, it's, it's actually it's working out just fine. I'm gonna have to work something out here. Maybe have this sticking out slightly then. Although I don't like doing that. I want to be as accurate as possible. Sorry, there you go. That was the right side. Um, gonna have to mark the top here on this on this piece because it, yeah. 
Um, anyway, and the other problem is that I have a slight gap here. That's because I, uh, I didn't think properly. You can see here the gap between the edge and here is actually smaller and it's bigger here. Um, so that means the whole cab is probably not perfectly squared. And when I say not perfectly square, uh, yeah, there you go. So I'm right on the edge here and there's this gap over there. Let me uh, try here. Yeah, so I have a, I have a gap. So I'm, I'm, I'm flush here, but here I have a gap and I would suspect the gap would be much, much bigger. Yeah. Over there, it's easy doing this with one hand. Yeah, there you go. Not great, not great work, Ali, but um, it'll have to do. I, I, I've glued and screwed everything now, so if I dismantle it, it'll just I have to rip it apart. So there's not much I can do about this other than um, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I hate saying this, but I'm gonna have to bondo this just to even hide it. Um, or the other option is to maybe cut it a bit. No, there's not much I. Yeah, that's just uh, that's shoddy job on my uh, my part. But anyway, not to worry. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to use some filler here and uh, sculpt and the last edge. But that's okay. Uh, so here we'll have those bars, and uh, this is the plexiglass that'll go here. So it'll actually sit on the uh, edge of this. Um, it looks dark, but once it's all lit up, it'll actually just, the colors will pop out. Uh, it's, you're probably better off using some uh, darker glass in general. It hides all the uh, <laughs> all the screen burns as well. Not that this, uh, this one has a screen burn, but um, and it, yeah, yeah the, the colors sort of pop out because they really pop out of the dark, um, as opposed to have a clear glass. Uh, very often you'll see, uh, you'll see um, the Gallagher is like that, and that's actually to hide some of the screen burn. Um, um, yeah. Anyway, there you go. So that's uh, that's the progress so far. Um, pretty happy with it. It's uh, it's gonna look ace when it's all done. So now I am waiting. Uh, so I'm gonna clamp these guys. Uh, I'm gonna clamp these guys. Sorry. Okay, go away. I'm gonna glue and clamp them in place. Um, I try to screw them in place, it'll probably just break because they're a bit thin and brittle. Um, so I'm just gonna clamp them, glue clamp them in place. Uh, this no, I'm not gonna clamp anywhere because I, I need to be able to remove it. So I'm gonna have to find some uh, hinges. Yeah, probably has to, uh, has to open this way. So I'm gonna have to find hinges and then, or do I? Yeah, the other option is to get these uh, these clamps here, um, I'm gonna have to source them. Anyway, the um, actual uh, uh, arcade clamps, or panel clamps. So the next uh, thing I need to do now, obviously I need to build a, a, a fr uh, sort of an opening here with a, a small box inside, make a small box, it's just to host the, uh, the light for the, the marquee. And then, uh, uh, it's gonna be a, a door here, and I haven't decided what type of door I want. It'd be nice to get a Nintendo type door, but they're really hard to find, and they're gonna be very expensive. So I might just put a, a generic door. Um, might be the um, best solution. And then, um, yeah, so that's the front. <clears throat> right now, before I glue the top here and put the top, uh, I'm waiting on on the uh, uh, router bit to do the uh, T-molding. Um, so I'm gonna do that. I need to um, to actually smooth that down, create a curve here, make sure they match. Uh, that's not another mistake I, I made. I should have made this when they were just cut. Uh, I kind of rushed. I just wanted to get it assembled. And um, so uh, once I have the T-molding grooves, it'll be easier, I can do that. Here, um, I want to do one for the front as well. I don't think that's in the original, but it'll look nicer, I think. Um, so, this will, the top will go to about here. And then, after that, I can start with the uh, bondo work, because uh, this was wood that I, uh, some of it I bought, one sheet I bought, but the other one was here, and it has some damage, but I'd rather reuse everything. Um, 
and just to hide a bit of the, you know, the, the screw and um, screw holes and that kind of stuff. So, uh, to the bondo work, cut this. Um, yeah, work in progress. But um, yeah. Um, Oh, and I need to do a b the bottom as well. There's actually a, a box at the bottom. So this is slightly higher by, but I'd say six, six inches higher anyway. Uh, and it's just, um, a lot of cabs have these. It's just a protection from the uh, from dampness on the ground. So the, uh, the base of the cab uh, isn't directly in contact with the, uh, the floor. Some, it would have a, a, small, a smaller, a, another base underneath it. So I need to do that and put that on wheels. So it'll be easier to bring it to the uh, the other shed. So there you go. Um, slowly but surely. Okay, so I've made uh, again some progress on the uh, Crazy Kong Cabaret, Donkey Kong Cabaret. So uh, I've just rounded the top here. I've made my opening uh, for the. Um, this is gonna be. Where's it gone? Actually, I should put it aside. It's gonna be where the uh, Donkey Kong Marky is. I'm gonna put that on clear. Um, can I actually do it just to stay to get an idea? Um, I'm gonna put that on clear plexiglass uh, so it shines through. I'll have to find a way to uh, hmm, maybe glue a small ridge here. Or no, I know, I know. I'll. Uh, I'll, so I've put just bars here, so uh, just to put extra support, but I'll put a, a plate here at the back, but I have it slightly spaced so I can slide the uh, plexiglass this way. That's what I'll do. Um, and then, uh, can I do, have I enough room to do grooves here? No, I'll have to find, uh, find a way to have the grooves just, uh, just stay, but that's, uh, that's not a big deal. Um, actually, I'm not sure I can do that. Oh, I should I shouldn't glue this and then straight away. Um, I hope this should be still fresh. So I, think I can take it out relatively easily. There you go. Uh, so I can actually slide it like that. Yes, there you go. My mistake. So, <laughs> um, what else have I done? So I've glued this in place. Um, don't think I need. It's not structural really. I don't need to. Uh, to, um, to uh, screw it in place. I've done my back uh, box, so it's slightly higher now. The, the, the ground isn't terribly even, so uh, it's all wobbly. And I've cut the, uh, the monitor, so it's right on the edge here. It doesn't look like it is, but it is. Uh, do I need to? Yes, it is. So, uh, that's room now for the uh, for the back door, uh, I need to cut a small notch here so I can have the cable, the power cable going in. But um, I think the box is getting there, so now I'm still waiting for the uh, the groove maker for the T molding. As soon as I get that, I can make the top plate, I can cut the holes and the air vent as well. The Nintendo air vent. I need to um, cut that and cut the hole for the the door. I need to source a door, or do, will I use the one I have? It might be too big. I don't know. I don't know yet. But um, yeah, I suppose I should do that before I cut the hole. Uh, actually, I can cut the hole later in this the process. That's not a big deal. But um, anyway, so once I have at least the, the grooves uh, done for the T molding, I can't and give it a, a coat of paint. So inside will be black here, where the front is black, the box is black, and the sides and the top, the outside of the top is has a wood veneer, and then the back again is black, I think. Or is it a wood veneer? I'll have to double check. But the, the sides have that wood veneer sort of effect. Uh, so I'll have to order some of that as well. But uh, yeah, before I, I do any of that, I need to give it a, a coat of uh, primer and paint, and black paint for the inside. Well, for the uh, for the box here. Uh, inside, I'll probably paint it white because it just makes it uh, that bright, much brighter if you're working on anything inside. Because a lot of cams are very dark and they're painted black, and it just makes uh, makes uh, repairing anything in cab very very hard. 
So anyway, that's the that's the next step for me. Uh, waiting for the uh, T-molding uh, router bit. Okay, so I have my uh, T-molding groove done. Um, I actually went a bit too hard with the router and got it out of alignment and uh, ended up eating a bit too much of this, so filled it with Bondo. Uh, this is the blade I use. And uh, so essentially this blocks against the, uh, the edge and you get that, uh, that exact depth. Essentially this, this depth from here to, uh, to the edge of the blade. And uh, um, yeah, it's a funny one, it's a tricky one to, uh, to use, especially with this router. I have to press manually, I can't just set the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the depth and then block it. So uh, I, I can set it, but then I have to actually manually press, so it's easy to get out of alignment, as you can see. Um, I went out here as well. Anyway, um, I started doing the bondo as well, just to uh, smooth out uh, all the holes and the edges. So I did the first layer, sanded, and now I'm just gonna do a smoothing layer, uh, just to get the, uh, some of the little uh, gaps and holes. Uh, yeah, that should be nice and uh, and trim. And then after that, we can start painting the cap. So I'm going to put a. Actually, I need to. I missed a spot here. Oh, and I still need to do the top. Uh, I have my uh, actually groove cut in this uh, section, so I just need to cut it somewhere here and uh, glue that up. Will I screw it? I might, screw, I might as well screw it as well. And glue and screw. Um, and then we can paint. Okay, so I've put my top um, on here um, a couple of uh, a couple of uh, problems I had a gap here so I'm actually um, just using tape to prevent it from sticking through the uh, wooden top here but I am and uh, I'm just filling that gap here and then um, just smoothing the rest of the uh, bondo fill uh, everywhere uh, and I'm gonna have a gap here that I'm gonna have to fill as well. I could have actually just cut at an angle, but I didn't actually quite, wasn't sure what that angle was. Um, and everything here right now uh, was an approximation, but um, it'd be all right, I can actually fill that up with, uh, I'm gonna use um, a, a very thin strip here that I'll glue and then fill the rest with Bondo. Um, or I, I so pawn. <laughs> Um, and the, the other thing is here, this wood, that's the only wood I've left to do this. I have this bit, but it's a bit too thin and uh, I think it, it got a bit damp at some point. But uh, So that's the only thick one I have and uh, it's got a lot of that, you know, grain, wood grain and texture. So as I'm going, I'm actually mixing my Bondo on it, so it'll fill a bit of the uh, gaps. Uh, I have more bondo to do at the bottom as well, so I'm going to use that to, uh, as a platform to uh, mix my uh, my uh, isopon bondo filler, we'll call it filler, um, and that way it'll start filling some of the gap, and then I can uh, I can sand it and then refill it again. So I'll get a smooth finish. Uh, it's going to be a similar problem on the inside, although that's not too bad. Um, because really when you're playing, you can't really see that much the, uh, the top. But I'll see my if I have a leftover bondo, I'll, uh, I'll fill that up as well. And then uh, I have my groove here done. I'm gonna put a, I'm not sure the original had, uh, but there's no Mackie here, so I'll just put a, a well the Mackie's here, sorry. Um, originally, it wasn't gonna be lit, but I'll put a, a light box here. Uh, but um, I'll, uh, I'm not sure it's in the original, but I'll put a, a T-molding here as well. I have some leftover and I'll hoard them more. Anyway, uh, at this stage I'm just going to wait for this to uh, to uh, to dry, to glue. I'll uh, screw this, I'll put about three screws on each side and uh, we should be ready to paint. Yeah, looking good. Um, okay, well the guys, I think here is actually a good, uh, good place to end it. The, uh, uh, structurally pretty much finished and uh, and now we're gonna start with the, uh, the first uh, the first uh, layer of cosmetics the uh, painting it anyway so I'm gonna end this video guys thank you for watching I hope this was interesting and I'll see you next time